I've got the top 10 sleeper picks in fantasy baseball coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. I'm going to count down the top 10 sleepers that you should target in your upcoming fantasy baseball drafts. If you like this content, please smash that like button. And a special thanks goes to all of our subscribers who have been watching these videos as you now account for 26% of all viewers. To the other 74% of viewers that haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so as it helps me create these videos for you. Also, leave a comment on a player that you think deserves to be on this list. This episode is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy Sports. Use the promo code BEATTHEODDS to double your first deposit up to $250. And first-time users get a free square, like tonight. If you bet on Shade to score one point and he does, then you win. One final note, I have covered most of the top 100 players in the league by position, and you can see them all by checking out my 2024 Fantasy Baseball playlist using this link. For simplicity's sake, my definition of a sleeper would be a player that could greatly outperform their ADP this season and that you cannot find ranked within the top 100 players. With that being said, let's get into it. We'll start at number 10 at Ezekiel Tovar, 172 ranked. Uh, last season, he had 79 runs scored, 15 homers, 73 runs batted in, 11 stolen bases, and a 253 average. Tovar's rookie season can be considered as a success. The 22-year-old has established himself as a premier defender, which is a great way to ensure playing time. He still needs to work on his plate discipline, something that's not too uncommon for young players in the league. He carries the benefit of playing at cores and should be hitting in a prime spot in that order. Even a modest increase in his offense could propel him into the top 10 shortstop to roster. Let's go to number 9, we have Sonny Gray. Currently ranked 123rd in the uh, Yahoo game here. Last season, he had 8 wins, 183 strikeouts, 2.79 ERA, and a 1.15 whip. Gray had some down votes for the AL Cy Young last season. He was really that good. He's off to the Cardinals where I see him continuing his success. His wins total was modest, but it's incredibly difficult to predict wins, and it's safe to say that you should expect Gray to collect at least 10 wins this season if he can replicate his success from last year. If you miss out on some big name pitchers early in the draft, picking up Gray late is a nice cons consolation. Let's go to number 8, we have Alec Bohm, ranked 141st in the Yahoo game here. Last season he had 74 runs scored, 20 homers, 97 runs batted in, 4 stolen bases and a 274 average. My favorite age for hitters you might ask, that would be 27 and that is exactly what Bohm is going to be entering his 5th season at, in the league. He's not a lights out hitter, but he's showcasing his ability to be selective at the play to make contact with the pitches he wants to hit. He had a 290 expected batting average, placing him in the top 93rd percentile last season. He's better served as the DH, so he may lose some at bats during the season, but he's certainly worth rostering this year. Moving over to number 7, we have Zach Geloff. Last season, he had 40 runs scored, 14 homers, 32 runs batted in, 14 stolen bases, and a 267 average. He's fast, he's got good range at second, and he can make solid contact at the plate. He does strike out quite a bit, but again, he's 24, and he has a total of 300 plate appearances in the league. What did impress me is that he had an 8.7 walk rate, which is a good indicator that he's able to work his way in and at bat. With a weak roster in Oakland, Geloff should find himself in the top third of the order. A full season from him might look like a 20 home or 20 stolen base season with probably around 80 runs. Moving to number 6, we have Jackson Cheerio, ranked 159th in the Yahoo game. His minor league stats last season were 88 runs, 22 homers, 91 runs batted in, 44 stolen bases, and a 282 average. The $80 million man is gunning for a roster spot, but unless he absolutely tanks this year, he should be a lock. His stats speak for himself, uh, but his 13.4 strikeout rate in the upper minors should translate well into the big leagues and he could easily make an impact this season. Even if he doesn't make the roster out of the gate, Churio is a high-quality stash. Play the patience game here, you will be rewarded this year. Moving to number 5, we have Dylan Seas, ranked 98th in the Yahoo game. Last season, he had 7 wins, 214 strikeouts, a 4.58 ERA, and a 1.42 whip. You really can't possibly be that bad, right? Seas had a monster 2022 and backed it up with his worst season of his career. His entire arsenal was down at least one mile per hour, and he couldn't keep the surge of base runners at bay. He's a sleeper for me because I figured this season should land somewhere between his all-star campaign of 2022 and his all-flop campaign last season. 
that would easily make him a top 30 starting pitcher if that does happen. Let's go to number four. We have Jonah Heim ranked 162nd in the Yahoo game here. Last season, he had 61 runs scored, 18 homers, 95 runs batted in, two stolen bases, and a 258 average. One cannot ignore the fact that Heim played at 95 runners last season. That's the effect of hitting in a loaded lineup, but he also has enough skill with the bat to warrant his success. He had a K rate under 20%, which gave him the ability to put the ball in play, and he was routinely placed in high run producing spots in that lineup. With Mitch Garber out of the uh, the team, there might be even more at-bats for Haim this season. Let's go to number three. We have Yandy Diaz, currently ranked 112th in the Yahoo game. Last season, he had 95 runs scored, 22 homers, 78 runs batted in, and a 330 average. How Yandy is not picked within the top 10 first baseman this season is beyond me. He hits the ball harder than 98% of batters. He has a 15.7K rate and a 10.8 walk rate. His ability to get on base is not new. He had a 4.10 on base percentage last season and a 4.01 on base percentage in 2022. He will likely remain in the leadoff spot for the Rays, but my hope is that he slides down a position or two to cash in some extra RBI opportunities this season. Over to number two we go. We have Pete Fairbanks, ranked 156 in the Yahoo game. Last season, he had two wins, 25 saves, 68 strikeouts, a 2.58 ERA, and a 1.01 whip. Fairbanks is filthy, and he's routinely passed over in the discussions of the best relievers in the game. He had missed time over the last couple of seasons, and the Rays are packed with arms capable of closing out games, but it really is Fairbanks' job to lose. Expect him and his 37% K rate to be near the top of the reliever rankings, regardless of whether or not he gets 30 saves this season. And finally, at number one, we have Riley Green, currently ranked 130th in the Yahoo game. Last season, he had 51 runs scored, 11 homers, 37 runs batted in, 7 stolen bases, and a 288 average. In limited action last season, Green nearly posted an 800 OPS. Not bad for a then 22-year-old. He has got one of the sweetest swings you'll see, and the ball just jumps off his bat. He has the tools to be a great hitter, he's smart on the bases, and he can field his position. I would expect Green to cut down on his strikeout rate this season, and if he gets to put more balls in play, then we could see Green become a solid contributor both in real life and on your fantasy squad. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm going to sign off for now, but I will catch you guys on our next episode.